What's good, YouTube? It's your boy and I'm back here with another video. In the draft for the Miami Dolphins is officially over. Our 2019 draft class is officially complete, officially wrapped up, okay? Now, we didn't have a fourth round draft pick, but my last video, it was on the third rounder. So, we got to talk about the fifth rounder, the sixth rounder, and the two seventh rounders in this video. As I can see on the screen, this is our draft class. These are the names. You can count Josh Rosen as a second round draft pick, honestly, if you want to. But you, that's just, you can do that if you want. But you don't got to, okay? Um, But this is our draft class. Now, get into these uh, final four picks, the fifth, the sixth, and the two seventh round picks. Now. In my opinion, once you get past the fourth, which we were past the fourth, once you get to that fifth rounder, in my opinion, you're not even looking at what players are at that point. You're looking at what players could become. So you're looking at players, these prospects, and you're at, and you're saying you're not necessarily picking the best player available. In my opinion, you're just picking up the up like a player that you see with a lot of potential, right? So it's it's hard for me. You'll probably you'll really never see me get mad over who we pick at fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth. Or I said eighth, Jesus, fifth, sixth, or seventh, because it's like uh, it's like I understand it. You just at the end of the day, you're not gonna get like a quality starter. Like the chance of that happening at after fourth is is incredibly low. But you can get somebody with a high ceiling. You can get somebody that could be a stable for years to come. So on going to our fifth round draft pick, we got Andrew Van Ginkle. Okay, now when we got him, um, Mac Wilson was still on the board. Uh, DeAndre was still on the board, another end that I probably would have liked more. And, and like I said, Mac Wilson, I would have liked more. But I was not upset with this pickup for the simple fact that I don't know a lot about him. I've learned a lot about him. I see that he's tall, he's lengthy, looks slim. Um, went to Wisconsin, looks like a great pass rusher. Well, a, a pretty good pass rusher. And will he start, you know, day one? He's an outside linebacker for 3 4. You know, obviously, we're switching to a 3 4. We're going to be running a lot more 3 4. Uh, will he be a day one starter? No, I'm sure he won't. But, um, Will he maybe rotate in the game? Yeah, maybe. And will he be able to develop into a great player? Maybe. I have to have that confidence. I have to have that hope that he will, okay? At the end of the day, there's a reason why these players are all available in the fifth round. None of them are complete players. So I can't get mad and say you should have drafted Mac Wilson. He's not complete because he wouldn't have been in the fifth round if he was. I can't say you should have drafted DeAndre. He's not complete because he wouldn't have been in the fifth round if he was. You know what I'm saying? So none of these players are complete. Just try to draft the one that you think you can really turn into a beast. And that's what we did. How can I be mad about that? I like it. It's a position that we kind of did need. Uh, I see a lot of people are mad because we didn't get an end. We didn't get a uh, second cornerback. I mean, we do have Eric Rose still. Uh, but we we still do have needs. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was, it was impossible to address everything. It was impossible to address everything like in this draft. You know what I'm saying? We still got some of them. CFL players, I said CFL, um, AAF players are also undrafted. Wait, you gotta also think about undrafted free agents. So there's still opportunities to still get some other players. Um, but anyway, as far as Andrew Van Ginkle, I think he will develop into something good. I have that that confidence in him. Okay. And then in the sixth round, we get the offensive tackle. I don't see how y'all could be mad. I don't see how anybody could be mad with this draft. We got the offensive tackle and we got the uh, guard, right? The guard, I think, will be starting. Michael Dieter, I think he'll be starting day one. The guard, I mean, the tackle, maybe not. Maybe he's he's not better than Jesse Davis, which would kind of suck. But um, maybe he's not better than him right away, okay? So maybe he won't start, but he could develop into a great right tackle. At the end of the day, you're not going to really find quality starters at tackle or, or, or at uh, outside linebacker pass rusher in the fifth round. You know, it's, it's tough. So you just got to find some people that you can develop. Um, and then in the seventh round, we got Chandler Cox, which is a fullback from Auburn. Now, I was looking up Chandler Cox, and I'm like, you know, I don't really care because I don't really care because it's the seventh round and there's no other really good, great players out there. And I think, you know, this symbolizes that, you know, we're gonna be using the fullback this year. A lot of teams went, really went away from the fullback. The fullback is like a dying breed in the NFL, but we drafted one. Uh, I looked at the statistics. He only had 11 carries throughout his whole um, college career, but he did have 26 catches. So that's important And if you're a fullback in today's game to be able to catch the ball. If you think about like uh, the bootlegs and everything that's under center, all those little bootleg plays where you know fake it to the running back and the fullback leaks out. The fullback is oftentimes unaccounted for because nobody ever thinks the damn fullback is going to get the ball. So if you have one that can catch actually make plays like we just drafted and also can block and get down in the trenches, I think that would be great. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, he's still a fullback. His impact on the game is going to be limited because it's not like he's going to be touching the ball or doing all that, a lot of crazy outside of the trenches. But... It's still awesome to have them. Getting back to, you know, old school football a little bit. And then the last pick of the draft, we got Miles Gaskins. I hope I said his name right. Miles Gaskin, 
out of Washington. I just looked him up a little bit too. Like I'm no, I'm no scout or anything. I never pretend to be. So I don't act like oh, I love the way his thing. I just look him up. I watch some highlights. I watch him game film, and then I will look at what everybody else say about him, and then I will form an opinion. Okay, that's all I do. Um, and Miles Gaskin, I think he was drafted to be a third down running back. They they say he's a great blocker. Well, he's he's a good blocker for his size. He's only five nine. He's really small. But he, he puts himself in a position. He'll get in the way. Obviously, he's small, so there's limitations. But he'll get in the way, put himself in positions, and he's going to be a third down back. That's what he's best at. He's too small to be a uh, every down back. But he could be a third down back, back. And since he's willing to block and can run great routes from the backfield and can catch the ball, I think that would be his role. Will he be playing right away? Who knows? You know what I'm saying? I think King Drake's a good third down back if we need one. Caleb Elijah and King Drake are uh, more than enough at running back. But um, it... it, it, it who knows if Miles Gaskin will get in the game this season? Who knows if, you know, he'll sit out? Who knows what he'll do at special teams, okay? Um, so that is our draft class. Those are the later people. Like I said, the later people are obviously not exciting, the most exciting things, because a lot of them won't start. Some of them might not ever even play. Some of them might get cut, you know what I'm saying? You never know what's going to happen with these guys. Uh, but overall, man, I would say I'm very excited with this draft. I'm very happy with this draft. Uh, like I said, I don't... The only, the only part of the draft that made me mad is when we do, we passed on Dwayne Haskins. That's all, only part. And that was all made up for when we got Josh Rosen, okay? So, at this point, uh, we got the offensive lineman that everybody wanted. We got the guard that everybody, um, we, got the, we got the defensive lineman that everybody wanted that we knew we needed in the trenches. We got, we got the defensive tackle, okay? One of the best defensive tackles in the draft, if not the best. We got uh, the guard that everybody knows we needed. Okay, and then we got a tackle that everybody knows we needed, right? And I don't know about the tackle if he's going to start day one. I do think the other two people are going to start day one, but I don't know about the uh, tackle. But we have the tackle that everybody thinks we needed, okay? We built the trenches. We got a fullback that can block, and then we got a running back for third downs. What's the issue? All right, that this is, uh, to me, this is a great draft. Did we, uh, did we address every hole? No, but we had so many holes on the team, it was impossible to do so. It was impossible to get starters at every hole that we had on the team. So, we got as many as we could out the way, and, and I'm very, very happy with the draft. And I do think, you know, obviously with the AAF players we got, also the un, uh, the undrafted free agents that's going to be available, it's only going to get better, guys. It's only going to get better. Maybe next draft, you know what I'm saying, I will question a lot more decisions maybe in the later rounds, but as far as now, I'm going to trust them because honestly, I would admit they know more about the people that drafted than I do. And this is their job, you know. I'm, this is just a hobby for me, and uh, and they haven't gave me this this regime right here haven't gave me a reason to not trust them. So I'm gonna trust them until then. Now, if Adam Gates does this, and like you know, what I'm saying it's way different than with Brian Flores and New Regime, they do it because they, like I said, they have they given me no reason not to trust them so far. I've I don't I haven't questioned any of the moves they made. I, every every move they made so far makes sense to me. Overall, if I had to grade this draft, I'm going to give it an A. You know what I'm saying? I don't think... My, my grade don't really matter, though, to be quite honest with you. Because I was going to give it... I'm going to give it an A regardless. Unless we wouldn't have got Josh Rosen, then maybe I wouldn't have. But, like, my grade don't really matter because I always try to look at the positives. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say, oh, Christian Wilkins is going to be a bust. Oh, Michael Dieter is not going to be able to block. I, like, I don't look at it like that. Because you can never... Under, first of all, you can never underestimate the the power of good coaching. You can never underestimate that. And second of all, you just never know. If everybody knew who was going to be good in the draft, then the draft would be a perfect order from good to bad every year. You know what I'm saying? You never actually know who's going to be good every year. Because if it was, it would be no such thing as a bust if everybody actually knew who was going to be good. It would be no such thing as a Tom Brady. Tom Brady would have been the first overall draft pick if everybody knew who was actually the best every draft. You don't know that, though. You know, there would be no Russell Wilson. He wouldn't have got drafted in the third round if everybody knew who was actually the best. You don't know who actually is the best ever, right? You just, you, you can make logical assumptions. You could, you could be, you could be right a lot of the time, but you're not going to be right all the time. So you never know. So at the end of the day, you just, at the end of the day, you just got to wait and see what happens. But I, I, I love this draft so far. You know what I'm saying? And it could be a terrible draft, but I love it because, um, I think, you know, we addressed a lot of the needs that we need to address. Now, especially when I count, you know, Josh Rosen as our second round draft pick when he was a, if he entered this draft, it would have been the, he would definitely got picked before Haskins. I don't want to say Kyler because just because of how much Cliff loved Kyler, but he would have definitely got picked before Haskins. He would probably got picked by the Giants, I would say, in this draft, okay? At number six, right? And we got him for a second round draft pick. Just a beautiful draft, in my opinion. Um... And real quick before I go, I want to say again, never underestimate the power of good coaching. Don't think because we have holes or just because a player was terrible. A lot of people like to say, oh, we don't have no edges. Like, the edges on our roster, who's to say they don't get better? Like I said, we got good coaches now. Well, I think we have good coaches now. Look at our O-line. We had an offensive line coach on drugs, literally, like two years ago, right? 
We had a whole team that was so dysfunctional. We had a coach that was a freaking egomaniac. It's a whole different vibe now, y'all. It's a whole different vibe. Never underestimate the power of good coach just because this guy haven't broke out, like Charles Harris haven't broke out, just because this guy haven't broke out, because does not mean they're buzz or does not mean they're trash, just because, oh, uh, Asiata, because Isaac Asiata, the guard that we drafted uh, years ago, haven't, haven't worked out. Never underestimate the power of good coaching. Let's see what, what they could do. Now, I'm not judging none of, the, none of our young players yet, okay? Because I understand they wasn't in the best position. Now I think they're in a good position. This is when I'm going to start judging our young players. I'm not judging Charles Harris yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not calling him a bust yet. I'm not calling Isaac Asiata a bust. I'm about to, though, but I'm not calling him yet. I got to see what these players do. But like I said, man, get in the comments section. Let me know what you guys think about the draft as a whole, the last four picks. It's your boy K Flexing. I'm out.